Hello viewers, it's Super GT here. Welcome back to some more Gran Turismo Sport gameplay. So, of course, very pleased to bring you some more uh, videos on this game. Lots of you requesting this. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself just a Forza guy anymore. I, I'm absolutely loving this game. So, I pretty much say that this is really a big part of the channel now, and I'm absolutely loving playing it. So, I'm very happy to bring loads of videos on it. So, here we are then, Nurburgring Grand Prix circuit. I've gone for the Audi. R8 LMS. Now I'm not sure what cars are the best in this class, so I thought I'd just give this car a go. Plenty of almost dive bombs into that first corner, but not, uh, no one actually changing position. The Porsche just somehow getting a poor run through the first corner, but just actually manages to keep his position around the outside through turn two. So he um, actually all four of us in the top four positions just keeping our keeping our position for now. That is quite a normal thing to happen though. Uh, in, in these races, you're all qualifying in well obviously in speed order your lap time order so in many senses you should over the course of the race kind of stay where you are if anything uh, because I mean the fastest guys at the front the slowest guys at the back it should really uh, pan out the same there shouldn't be many overtakes um, and, which is why I think the start of the race is very important you kind of just have to force the issue very early try to get past the guys who are technically faster than you and then see how it goes from there now that's perhaps one criticism of the game that the races are like that it can sometimes be quite boring because you're all in speed order but but it's not always going to be the case sometimes you can get very good races and let's hope that this is an example of that the Porsche just coming across to cover me off from overtaking him fair enough through turn 10 into 11 you see there the guy in the lead already opening up that gap big gap already I'm about two and a half seconds behind it's good to know the gap to the leader so the red um, sorry the white writing in the red mark next to my name on the left hand side of the screen so 2.7 seconds as we go through the chicane now that is just about clean if you keep two wheels on the curb it registers as clean so that is pretty much the edge of the circuit the the limit in the game at least that's where everyone goes basically so out of turn number oh, what turn is that number 15 the final corner of the circuit struggling to get traction down in this car I'm, I'm racing with traction control level two at this point very late on the brakes just going to lose a bit of momentum and i think i might have even made contact with the place you see they're struggling fish tailing violently coming out of turn one and i'm going to lose about a second there over the porsche i'll be interesting to, i'll be interested to hear as the porsche actually goes for a move on the rcz doesn't quite manage to put it off i'll, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on traction control actually he's all over the grass trying to get past and is he going to tuck back in uh, yes he is just about i'll be interested to hear your thoughts if this doesn't go on again no he's going to he's going to defend him i'll be interested to hear your thoughts on traction control in this game i'm not sure what is the best setting for me i mean on forza if you turn it off that's normally the best thing if you learn to to deal with it but in this game it seems like sometimes turning it off isn't always the best thing to do I, I, it's hard for me to tell I think I can be quick sometimes I, and sometimes I'm not it depends on the car, it depends on the track it depends on the corner even so maybe even turning it up and down depending on the corner might be a, a good way to go maybe many of you do that so of course, I mean I'm new to this game well, we all are really because it only came out about two months ago but I'm fairly new to the recent Gran Turismo games as uh, never played five or six the the Italian here in the Porsche very poor exit from turn 11 is that going to be a potential move now into the final chicane not quite going to tuck back in and uh, reclaim fourth place not going to bother going for third there I don't think I was really that close enough but trash control is an interesting one I'm not quite sure exactly the best setting it'd be good to hear your thoughts in the, in the comments if you know any better as I get a massive moment there massive switchback massive violent fishtailing the next to the final corner I'm going to skip ahead to um, the start of lap 4 you're just going to have to look ahead here because the Italian goes for a move a bit of contact involved he goes through just blocks off the, the Dutchman on the exit of turn 1 he's up into second place now is the Italian but we're going to see a bit of revenge here. The, the, the uh, touch guy not having any of that. Max Verstappen lunge up the inside. No messing about from him. So, I mean, that's that's quite a common theme, actually, in, in Gran Turismo Sport. Lots of 
overtaking where you kind of just barge each other out the way side on contact and you don't often get penalties for that there, there are ways around the system into the next corner though the Italians gonna go for it feisty Italian back again at Nürburgring and he is not taking any shit in this one he's just gonna violently <laughs> retake that position back up into second place tip for tap between the Dutchman and the Italian I've got to actually nudge him in the back there a little bit late on the brakes and a uh, big mistake for me uh, thankfully though the Italian managing to keep control of his car and actually he's going to open up that gap as I get a poor run out of um, the bottom hairpin massive moment you see here I'm having a horrible time oh my god all over the track from left to right and that has not been a good half a lap there I've got to really recover my thoughts and this is yeah on traction control setting too maybe I'm just not that good and one thing I would say is that I've changed the, the uh, camera setting so perhaps you might notice as I go into the, the uh, tyre, sorry it wasn't even a tyre, the, the barrier, the pit entry, absolute noob move. Um, I'm going to get overtaken by this German, so I go down to the fifth place and I'm actually still within range, I'm just going to go for a move. A dive bomb of the century, maybe, if, if you want to vote for that, I'm not sure if you would, but up the inside is actually a really good move. I think he actually vote, um, breaks a little bit early. He's in the Peugeot as well. A bit of contact through turn two, but back up into fourth place. What I was going to say, I've changed the camera. So you might notice that it's a bit more flexible uh, as it is in, let's say, Forza. But actually, I found it harder with this uh, camera to, to recognise the trash, uh, sorry, the, the car spinning out. Which is perhaps why I'm making so many mistakes. At the end of the race here, another mistake. Uh, so spinning out there. Luckily, by that point, I was about 15 seconds ahead or something or fifth place so I'm going to finish fourth uh, so not too bad a result I mean that's where I started so I mean I can't complain too much I guess and as I said normally you finish kind of where you start I'm going to go for the Mercedes which has some weird wheel action going on there not what, not quite sure what the hell is happening but I'm going to go for the Mercedes I drove this car in a recent video in the Manufacturers Cup I felt happy with it let's see how it goes around Nürburgring, we drove around Suzuka last time so a little bit of an unknown but we do know the track we've just driven it and up the inside into the first corner it's going to be three abreast now coming into turn number two look at that just a bit of a nudge I've turned in a little bit late there and uh, just pushed the Frenchman a little bit wide we almost make contact again into turn number three we make contact for the third time there then looking around the outside of the Turkish man or woman I don't know maybe or maybe they don't have a gender. You know, you never know these days, do you? Well, they might not be a person. To be honest, it could be a robot behind that uh, car. You never, you never really know, do you? But all we know is that they're from Turkey. It's a Turkish genderless alien person. I don't know. Could be anything. Might not be a person. Might be an animal. Anyway, coming down the hill, second place. Not too bad. We've overtaken the Frenchman into the hairpin at the bottom. And we're really into it. Oh yeah, really into the gravel trap. Just braked way too late. Not sure what the hell I was thinking. A lapse of concentration. And luckily there was a massive gulf between the 6th place guy there and the 8th place. As I just slot into this massive space. And don't lose any more positions, which is good to know. So this is where the recovery begins. If it, if it does, let's hope it does. We've got a 10 laps. So I, I do like these a slightly longer races. When you've got like the four lappers, it is, I mean, it's good to have a nice quick race, but sometimes having a 10 lapper, 20 minutes or so in total length, is, is a good time, good total time for a race, as long as it's fairly close and you've got something to do, I guess. If, if you're up on, up the front on your own or at the back on your own or anywhere on your own, doing nothing, with nothing to hope for, then it can get quite boring and lonely. But in this case, you can see here, just catching back up to the, to the group ahead, qualifying in third place so down in seventh for now let's see if we can get back up to third place at least let's see if that can happen crossing the line to start lap number two nine laps to do the damage tucking into the slipstream of the other mercedes looking up the inside into turn number one on the brakes i think he's actually braked a little bit late there um we braked it at the same time but he was obviously ahead so a little bit too late for him up the inside into sixth place and we're going to try to regain our position and our composure as we do then into turn number three a little bit wide actually i can hear him scree uh, screeching wide behind me so we're going to try and pull away from him the best we can and pull away and try to catch up 
with the German in the Beetle and the Spaniard as well up ahead. Now coming through the chicane of five and then six. I think there was a bit of a nudge there. The, the Spaniard in the Peugeot perhaps nudged a little bit wide by the German in the Beetle. But coming up into the chicane, this is lap number three. So final couple of corners on the lap. Massive late braking and just actually um, lower my SR rating there, as I, or sportsmanship rating, as I go into the back of him. Next lap around, similar story, almost, very late on the brakes, too late though, and actually get a penalty, but luckily you guys have informed me that you don't actually really have to slow down at all. Just carry on like this, and you know, you'll just, it'll just go down like here. Took it normal speed, it went down a little bit, two temps. Next corner, going to turn three, a slow corner. It's gone down from two seconds to one or oh, 0.79. So you see there, you, I mean, I didn't even slow down any more than I normally would, and it's just gone down. So you can actually get penalties and let them go down just by driving normally. Good little tip there. Uh, the the Frenchman in the Peugeot, very slow, off the exit of the turn seven hairpin at the bottom of the track, and it, now he's on the back foot against the German in the Beetle. So we've got a Frenchman in a French car, we've got a German in a German car, and then we've got me, a British guy in a German car. I'm not quite being so patriotic today. And they're coming through the fast right of turn 11. Uh, actually, I think he had to go on the brakes there to avoid hitting the back of the German. Nice stuff. Up the inside then, it's going to be a drag race up towards the chicane. I'm just going to slot in ahead. Yes, we do. Looking for our breaking point. I was very late every lap so far. And actually hooking up very nicely this time. No penalty to report. Actually, the penalty goes down a little bit there. And we're going to get a very nice exit up the inside into the final corner. Job is done. Yes, it is. Although he could look for that cut back, and he's still right on my tail. I'm not sure how good that thing is in a straight line. I don't think it's the best. So we've got a 1 minute 58.1. We look to get some consistent laps in this race. Into turn one. Bit of a nudge from behind, but if anything, I think that might have helped me because it kind of took his momentum right off, and then I actually just keep the line around the outside and keep the position. So up into third place. Uh, the recovery is on, but we're not too far behind second and first actually. Let's see if we could uh, try to reel them in and maybe go for one better or maybe two better if at all possible. So we're going to skip ahead then. This is lap number seven. So you see the gap hasn't changed too much, although coming through ten, the uh, German in the Mustang a little bit wide through there and then very wide again. So a massive lapse of concentration from him Back onto the track, wasn't quite sure which way he was going to go, but then I just managed to get past without losing too much time. Up into second place, the, the uh, Turkish alien genderless animal thing is about five seconds ahead, so I'm probably not going to catch him unless he makes an error uh, similar to what the German did there. But you can see already, so I've just gone past him, the Beatles come out of nowhere and started battling him, and I'm already about three seconds ahead. That is good to see. That's always helpful when... Some of you overtake just gets into a battle immediately. A 157.8, a good uh, fast lap time there, actually. Not too bad. I think my qualifying lap was actually a, a 57.3 in the Porsche, so perhaps the Porsche is quicker. It's just very hard to control. I found it a lot harder to control than this. Um, so I, I suppose there's a risk or a balance you have to try and strike between um, consistency, which you kind of need in a 10 lap race, and also speed. But it, it, if that speed comes at the price of you nearly spinning off every two seconds then it might not be worth taking because of that Porsche I found it very hard to control I'm not sure about you but of course just let me know about the traction control tips because I think that's the one thing I need to try and sort out and perhaps it is harder in chase cam on a controller so don't forget I'm playing chase cam here well you can see that obviously but I'm playing on a controller which might be a lot different than uh, traction control off on a wheel with pedals it might be a bit easier but there we go, it's going to be a second place, and so not bad at all. We started third, went down to seventh, and then a decent recovery back into second place. So really pleased with that race in the end, despite the mistakes at the beginning. It was a nice little recovery, and a fun race overall in the end. But that is the end of this one. I do hope you enjoyed, as always, guys. Uh, do smash the like button if you did, and obviously subscribe if you're new to the channel. Welcoming all new subscribers, of course. Many of you have subscribed to the channel very recently, in fact... November, December have been my best two months on YouTube ever. So really good news in that in that regard. And I'm uh, very thankful for 
anyone that is uh, continually supporting the channel. But that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I shall see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>